And everybody gave power to the Antichrist. In other words, what did they do? They worshiped the Antichrist. How did they worship? Through their behaviors, following what the Antichrist was telling them to do, obeying the Antichrist, doing as the Antichrist was doing. All of those things, and that's why we talked about it. That's why we spent so much time on that. So how do we know then, even the more, even the more, that we're not going to be deceived by the Antichrist and receive, uh, you know, walk in and, 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 and stumble, right? You just can't stumble into worshiping the Antichrist. We talked about that, right? We talked about the mark. Again, we talked about that mark of the beast, worshiping the beast, worshiping his image and worshiping the number. But there's also some sort of, um, you know, precursors to that. So in this, in this effort to begin to establish a, an ability to do any kind of spiritual warfare, we had to have all of that other foundation. We had to know that the mark of the beast uh, is not just something out there willy-nilly, right? It are specific behaviors, specific attitudes, specific actions. And we must know, we already talked about this, we must know who the beast is. Right? We talked about Revelation uh, 19 and 20. We talked about the fact that the false prophet is the one that causes all to take the mark. So if the false prophet has not been identified, then we don't know who we're getting this mark from. Because it's the fault, the Bible says, the false prophet is the one that creates and forces everybody to take this mark. So we got to know, now we got to know who the beast is in order to worship him, who the beast is, the Antichrist, in order to know his number and worship his image. And we also have to have had a false prophet who ushers in that behavior and then comes again back to that worship. If the worship of the beast is not associated with this mark, right? If there's no worship associated with that mark, then it is not the mark. Amen? As we pointed out before. If the worship, that's why I started out with the Bible study talking about worship and how you're worshiping, if that is not associated with whatever the thing is, coin, you know, some other behavior, etc., some other thing, some other mark, tattoo, whatever. If worshiping the beast is not associated with them, that is not the mark. Because the Lord God said in Revelation, it's the mark of the beast, worshiping his image and and the and, and worshiping his number, the number of the man, right? So then the number is actually a physical name or number of the beast. So you have to know who the beast is in order to know the physical name or number of that beast, that beast empire, right? Where, where he's coming out of. And then finally, if it is not associated with buying and selling, then it is not the mark. So if it only has one of those elements, you can still examine it. It may or may not be good for you, but it is not the mark. Okay? So, again, this is directly associated, really, to your, your ability to search within yourself, develop your right standing with the Lord, repent from your ways, first of all. That's the first step in any kind of spiritual warfare because you don't want to go into a situation blind fooled, deceived, or confused. You know, you must be able to know I'm walking with the Holy Spirit. I know that I've, I've prayed and I've fasted. I know that I've sought the Lord about this thing. I know that I've searched within myself to make sure there's not something that the Antichrist can use, right? Lustful behavior, pride, deceit, 
uh, 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 you know, your materialism, coveting, right? Uh, pornography, fornication. You want to make sure those things are not within you so that the devil can't use something to manipulate you. Or you don't want to go into a situation like these sons of Siva and not being not being with the Lord. Not, you know, trying to call out a demon when they were totally unprepared to do. And that demon attacked them. Beat them up. Stripped them naked. The, the, it, this is not a game. You know, many times people think, oh, you know, this a game. I'm going to play with this. I'm going to dabble with that. Right? You don't want to go in there being unprepared. You don't want to be there playing around because the Antichrist, the evil spirits, the demons are not playing. And remember that every time in the Bible when Jesus confronted a demon a demon or evil spirit, even these evil spirits in Acts that we just read about, they knew he said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. It was, I know Jesus, the Lord and Savior. I know Paul is able and walking with the Lord. But who are you? I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know of you to be in possession of any of those anointings or skills. Because the demons know. The demons know who they can play with and the demons know who they can beat up. And you don't want to get, go in there ill-prepared. Amen? And every time that Jesus confronted one, what did, they, what did those demons say? The pigs, Lord, right? The demoniac the, identified, Lord. The man by the lake said, Lord, Lord. Everyone, they recognized him. They knew, not just because they had hurt well, Primarily, probably because they had heard, but surely they heard the reputation, right, of Jesus. They knew that he was certainly in communication with the Almighty God. They recognized that. They recognized his power. Does Satan recognize your power because you are walking with the Lord, because you've been anointed with the Lord, because you have dealt with the things that he could, you know, the sins, the behaviors that he could manipulate? Does he know that you pray and fast? Does he know that you have the power? of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that you are bringing about things to happen through the blessing of the Almighty God. Because trust me, the demons know, just as we saw in Scripture. Amen? So, I hope that this lesson has been a blessing to you. I hope that you will stick around and come back for the next few installments of Spiritual Warfare. And um, we're going to be continuing to address those um, qualities, if you will, that we need to have um, and develop in our lives in order to do uh, the spiritual warfare. And when I say that, I don't mean, you know, clearly, remember the word of God says that we don't, f we're not fighting with flesh and blood. So I'm not talking about, you know, going around and, 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 and acting in a uh, black magic witchcraft type of way, you know, casting spells and all that. I'm not talking about anything demonic or occult. I'm talking about the very fact that you're walking with the Lord. You are under the protection and the unction of the Holy Spirit. And whether you are um, a philosopher or a, uh, a, a, or a, a vagabond, whether, you, whether you're homeless, houseless, or, or wealthy, if you're not walking with the Lord and have the uh, anointing of the Holy Spirit, the power through Jesus the Christ, no amount of casting out demons, no amount of anointing with oil, no amount of laying on of hands is going to achieve anything. So we're going to continue to look at those areas. And um, as I said, I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you. I really enjoy our time together. Um, I'm so thankful that you have visited with me again. And until next week, if the Lord's will, Shalom, and may his face shine upon you and give you his peace.